on this episode of The Breakthrough Show. It's a show for the artists today as we connect with two incredible humans who are changing the world through their art. First up, we're meeting a musician with an incredible story of triumph, Kevin Chambers. Not knowing if this music thing was always something he wanted to do with his life, Kevin's life-changing moment confirmed for him that he was not only meant to share his music with the world, but that it would help heal himself. Then we'll have a conversation with a holistic metalsmith and the creator of transformational adornments, Ali Kaus. In our chat, we'll find out about how Ali got into such a unique line of work, and you'll hear all about the process it took to create host Jessica Dugas's very own jewelry piece. All this and more coming up on today's episode. us moments when we have the opportunity to make a choice and what we choose has the potential to change our lives forever join us now for another inspired episode of the breakthrough and now please welcome the creator and host of the show jessica dugas Welcome back to The Breakthrough Show. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, and I'm super excited to welcome you back for another episode today. And it is going to be a jam-packed episode, so we want to get right into it. I want to first thank you all for watching or listening wherever you are in the world, and we're very thankful to have you here today. Uh, We have an incredible episode, as I mentioned, coming up later on in the show. We're going to be talking to Ali Kaus, who creates transformational adornments, and she actually made this necklace that I'm wearing today, and um, we're going to be sharing a little bit about that later on. And she's going to be talking to us about several different things, um, including authenticity, which is, I think, a topic that is really important for entrepreneurs and creatives and even musicians out there. And um, we have an incredible musician on for our entertainment segments today, which, you know, we've talked several times this season about how my husband and I will sit there scrolling through TikTok together at night. It always starts with a story about that. And um, my husband was listening one night, came across a um, fantastic musician that was playing the piano and singing for us on TikTok. And he said, Jessica, you have to come check out this guy. He's so good. And I and I said, OK, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. You know, and I'm tired at night. And But I, I listened and um, he was amazing. The musician that we have on today, this this amazing person that we heard on TikTok has been through a lot of things in his life. Um, he has has recorded two EPs, has been up for awards and performed all over the place. And he actually has a master's in film scoring, which I didn't know until I read his bio. Super interesting. So please welcome to the show for the first time today, Kevin Chambers. Kevin, welcome. Hey, how's it going? Nice to be here. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to get to talk to you. No, this is fantastic. I, I love uh, doing the, doing these things with, with, with various people. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I would love, we have a tradition on the show to start out by sharing with our audience something that's bringing you joy today. So what would that be, Kevin? Wow. Um, so something right now that's bringing me joy. I'm about to go to Iceland next week. Um, I've been planning this trip for the past couple weeks and I'm about I guess next Tuesday I'll be flying to Iceland for 10 days that's incredible I've, I've wanted to go to this country for almost 15 years and I was like you know what I just need to there's no time like the present so wow <laughs> yeah um, that's oh, that's yes. interesting so I'm doing like the full ring road around the entire country so I'm basically camping you know for 10 days doing this whole trip so wow. yeah it'll be really I mean it, it's totally out of the ordinary for me but I'm excited to to do it well you've had um you're going on that journey but you've had quite the journey um you know the especially the last what six or seven years or so yes, um, in your life six. Um, right. tell us a little bit about, um, you know, let's just start at the beginning. Like how, how long have you been doing music? How, how did you get into doing music to begin with? Um, so if you want to go all the way back, <laughs> I, I started playing piano or practicing piano when I was five years old and I started singing around then as well. So I was, you know, very young when I started to do music, I didn't really think I was going to pursue it, um, just as a general thing until I got to high school 
when I went to see Ben Folds play a concert and it just totally blew my mind because I was doing I was doing all classical stuff before that and I was like oh my gosh I was like 16 years old at the time I was like I did not understand that you could actually do this rock piano that he was doing <laughs> and it was just it, it really did blow my mind and so ever since that day I've just totally committed to you know playing piano and continuing to you know learn how to sing and uh yeah it's just been pretty you know it's, it's totally like a you know flip-flop moment in that in that sense hmm. um but yes yeah, so I I I didn't really think I was gonna pursue music as a full-time gig until I got to grad school when I did the um, film music composition masters and after that I, I did some jobs in, in the music business industry but I was like I can't really create at the same time as doing all these like you know paperwork style mm -hmm. type jobs and so I went it just started to freelance and started to try and pursue music in the on or on the creative side mm. and uh but then if we get to you know the moment for me that um was pretty big i was how old was i, I was 27 years old mm. um and i was going to play a radio gig uh on the outskirts of new york at uh, monmouth college which is in mm -hmm. i think new jersey and I had a stroke that night uh, before I was going to do my show. And I, you know, luckily my friends were with me and they realized I was having this stroke and they called 911 and I got to the hospital. But I totally don't remember a full week of my life after mm -hmm. this happened. And it was because I had an arterial venous malformation, which is an AVM in my brain. And I also had an aneurysm in there as well. Wow. And it had, I had had it my whole life. I had no idea that I had this, you know, vessel that was about to explode. So you and had no, you had no like health issues up until this point. Nothing whatsoever. I, you know, I actually, I did a show with my friend. I played backup for him while he was doing his performance at the radio on the radio um, station. Mm -hmm. And, uh, finished with him was setting up for my own show and it just it just happened I went like you know white as a sheet you know vomited couldn't you couldn't communicate with people and wow. I you know lost it from then on in but um or there on it so it was uh it was pretty wild um for two weeks I was in the hospital and then two more weeks after that I was doing rehab I was doing you know occupational therapy physical therapy, um, speech therapy, because it was right near Broca's area, which is, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a, a place in your brain where you, you know, form sentences and, and uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty, um, it was a pretty big moment for me. And uh, yeah, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. And so like five and a half weeks after I had the stroke, I ended up having brain surgery and it was su successful. And so luckily I'm here to talk to you now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, and I've just, you know, I've, I guess I've, I've been recovering ever since and I've been getting my you know, speech back because um, I couldn't, I could not communicate with people right after it happened. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I imagine, and I, I, I say this from a place of what music has done in my own life, that music has been therapy for you that yes. this that this i'm not sure if i'm going to do this as a thing has right. become almost something that has saved you in a way i think so i it, it's um you know i luckily i say this now i say luckily it was on the left side of my brain because the right side is where all the creative stuff happens right. so had it been on the other side i would have lost all the you know years that i put into you know playing piano and singing and um that was a that was a break for me i guess right um so i i really felt i was like you know what i i need to pursue this as much as possible after after my aneurysm happened so or my stroke happened so yeah, yeah. it was pretty pretty big moment for me <laughs> what what were what were, other than just the music was there anything in particular that kept you going because it you know even if 
no matter what we're going through with our health, even if someone mm-hmm. comes in and says, oh, you're going to be fine. You still have that anxiety that comes up of like, this just happened. And right. so what are, what are, what's there anything in particular other than the music that helps you to get through all of it? I really just want to say that my friends and family were, were all there helping me um, recover, were sending me their love, sending me cards, sending me small little gifts. And I, I really think that that was a big part of it too, in helping me return to somewhat of a normal sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, you know, I, I, I love every one of them and I, I can't ever express enough gratitude for what they, how they express their love towards me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, you know, I've, I've always been thankful for that. I love that because it's something that we've talked about on the show so often, how important it is that we surround ourselves with people that are supportive and, and, um, and I think if I, if I'm remembering correctly, you've sang with your sister before, is that correct? (laughs) And she's pretty amazing herself. (laughs) It's incredible. Um, so she's, she's an actress. She lives on the West coast in LA. Wow. And, uh, but she sings too, and she's an incredible singer. And I've been like, you know, trying to get her to you know jump on TikTok and start putting up videos and she's more of an Instagram person. So I, uh, I okay. she's, she's doing her Instagram thing now. Um, Meg Seidel is her name. And, uh, so yeah, I, I've been, but I've been pushing, you know, for TikTok recently <laughs> for her. <laughs> so yeah. I would love to see that, but now I will go hunt her down on Instagram because sure. a little yes. bit that I saw, she is fantastic. Yeah, she's incredible. She's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that you've you've released two EPs, one before the the stroke and everything, right? And then one right. after. Is that how that went? Yes. That's yes, that's what happened. So <laughs> the second one was kind of like. You know, I had the stroke Ended. Up, I was in New York at the time and I moved to Nashville because honestly, the noise of New York, it was just too much for mm. you know, right after brain surgery. I just could not handle. I was like listening to four or five different conversations yeah. at a time while I was walking down the street. And so I moved to Nashville. I was there for about five years and uh, I released the second one. And it was kind of, you know, it's kind of like starting over was one of the tracks on the mm. album and and it it was written right before the stroke and it felt kind of like, uh, okay, this is, I got to start over and, and get back to foreshadowing it. almost. Right. That's a little <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. But um, yeah, so it, I, uh, yes, I did one before and one after, and then I've also released several, you know, singles like with cover songs and original tracks as well. So I yes. love it. I love it. Well, you're going to do a song for us um, for this segment called The yeah. Way Home. Can you tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about that song? Sure. So this one is about um, basically when you're in a relationship, you don't really feel like you're actually there anymore, even though you're still in it and you're tr- trying to fight with yourself. And uh, for me, that was finding your your way home. And so that was kind of the uh, analogy that I came up with and, uh, it's called the way home. So, yes. <laughs> uh, well, I know everybody in the audience right now just raised their hand and they said, we know about that. So we're right. ready to hear the song. <laughs> All right, you guys well, here to perform the way home is Kevin Chambers. It starts, but you know the feeling. Suddenly you're pressed up against the ceiling. We've been through this before. But here we go again, running round in circles, ready on your mark to jump these hurdles and end up on the floor with no sense of direction we lost the way home but I don't wanna be alone we lost the way home don't want 
until you're numb and the light starts fading Try to slow it down, the days are racing And time won't wait for us We're ready to move on but you're still uncertain Coming to the close, the final curtain The stage reduced to dust Oh, beautiful. I'm so glad you are still here because we we oh. need we need that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, well, you guys, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back and talk to Allie Kaus and more with Kevin Chambers at the end of the show. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, my name is Brandon. And over the past year, the Deloitte Cafe team and I have traveled across the US researching this rapidly growing industry of CBD. What we have found throughout the industry were products that were inconsistent in dosage and used ingredients that weren't even lab tested. Products with chalky textures, bitter aftertaste, worst of all, confusion among the CBD consumers. That's why we created Delight Cafe. A 15 milligram lab tested, all natural, water soluble hemp CBD powder pack. It's odorless, colorless, and tasteless. Add it to your favorite drink of choice wherever, whenever, on the go. Quickly find your calm, your balance, and your delight when you need it most. Welcome back to the Breakthrough Show. I am so excited about my guest today because we have worked together for the at the time of this recording the last couple of months on creating. Now, if you're on podcast, I'm going to tell you, you need to go watch the video of this episode. So I am wearing a beautiful piece that my guest today created just for me. And there's something really special. Let me tell you about saying I'm wearing a one of a kind piece that was created just for me. And not just that it's one of a kind, but that it's something that infuses what I feel like parts of your soul into it and who you are and what you stand for and what your, your desire is for the future of your life as well. 
My guest today is very multi-passionate like I am. I know those of you guys that are listening for that have been listening for a long time are going, really, Jessica, we're shocked. We're shocked right now. <laughs> Not so much, but she is into many different things. She is a jeweler that creates what she calls transformational adornments and matriarch cuffs. Please welcome my very special guest today, Ali Kaus. Welcome, Ali. Hi, thank you. I am so happy and honored to be here with you today. Thank you. I am excited to have you here. Look, the plan was just to have you on the show. And then when I saw these beautiful pieces that you create, I was like, well, I need one of those before you come on. So we yeah, have to figure absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I think it helps get into what I do, right? And of course, you have to be a jewelry lover to want to take that dive with me. Um, but I think that you really understood at that deeper level what the jewelry was about, mm -hmm. you know, the transformational adornments were about. And that's why you said yes. Yes. Well, I know I want to, I want to get into a little bit. Obviously, you love jewelry. I love jewelry too, but it's not something that I, I couldn't imagine sitting down and you put your whole self <laughs> into these pieces that you make. And so that takes a lot of energy. Tell us a little bit about how you got to love jewelry like you do first. Okay, sure. Um, you know, even from a little girl, I loved the act of adornment, um, jewelry, getting dressed, putting outfits together, you know, doing my hair very Libra-esque child. You know, I loved beauty and beautiful things and that act of beautification. Um, and I always still remember certain bits and pieces of jewelry that I had in my life and how that completed an outfit. Now that's a very decorative part of jewelry, right? That's a very surface level of jewelry. Um, and adornment. And I grew up in a very creative household. My dad, um, Although his career was not with writing, he was very gifted with words. And my mom is a painter and was a full-time artist for many years. So it was in my house, creativity expression was always around me, but I didn't grow up knowing what the heck I was gonna do. It took me, like finding jewelry was a process of elimination for sure. So when I finally got to college, it was not even then that I knew I was going to end up in the metal smithing studio. It was, I went through language arts and then studio arts and then sculpture. And the story that I like to tell is sculpture, I really loved. But for what I was making, it was very large and heavy and I couldn't move it on my own. And it was very important to me then and still is now that I can be autonomous in my work and kind of do what I need to do on my own. Mm -hmm. And so I was also taking some jewelry classes in and out of all this whole time, but it was like I was not connected to my authentic self for many, many, many years, this time in my life included. So I wasn't able to like feel that spark of jewelry when I had right. dabbled in it before. And then through this process, process of elimination and meeting up with sculpture and then taking this jewelry when I made it into the metal smithing studio for that like you know last time where I was disconnected with knowing what I wanted to do it was like coming home hmm. and I remember I was gifted this book on ethnic jewelry and there was an immediate connection and aha, aha moment about jewelry made as talisman, as amulets, as the like the symbolism of a jewelry, of a piece of jewelry and the magic it has the potential of holding that those cultures believed in. And that was really when I, I, I connected with jewelry as a way to express myself and connect to my authentic self. Now, it wasn't like I was like, okay, Allie, you're going to connect with yourself right now. It was a serious right. multiple year evolutionary <laughs> process and still is, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I think that it's the forever thing. 
But my work in the very beginning was really about connecting to who I was so that each piece I was making in school and for many years after, I mean, this was 20 years ago that I was in right. school. It's not like it was yesterday. <laughs> um, yes, but it each- was. We don't have to admit that here. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I think of that number, I'm like, oh my gosh. Um But for me, jewelry at that time really was that it was magic. It was the magic of connecting to myself. So with the pieces I was making, I was learning about me and my divine connection. And over time, I was able to articulate that more and more. Mm. But it was really like me learning about me, if that makes sense. And then I was able to conceptualize more and more about what that meant and then jump to now where I can really understand what's going on and what my, you know, my gifts are, uh, other than just being able to make something that can be worn, if that makes sense. Right, yes. Um, My process of creating my piece with you was a beautiful one. And it's a very, this is not like you go to Ali's website and are like, I want to necklace. Thank you so much. Here's my money. And you get it in the mail. That is not what you do. Can you take everybody a little bit through what your process looks like? Sure. Absolutely. So the easiest explanation would be that you have seen, you know, you've heard about a transformation adornment. You saw my website, you connected to it and you pressed the button that, yes, I want the transformational adornment, right? You automatically get a questionnaire and that starts the process, you know, that starts the process. And the questionnaire really gets some logistical um, questions answered, but then also um, it starts this energetic process. And that's something that's part of my breakthrough is, is, is understanding and then believing in my ability to work on this energetic plane that we have access mm. to as humans being spiritual beings. Um, but it really, the, the first question is, you know, what is this piece celebrating? I really want individuals to celebrate whatever it is that you want to celebrate. It could be you know, graduation, it could be retirement, it could be marriage, a baby, but it also really could be something internal that you're, that you've been working on that personal growth and transformation, the alignment that you have been working on um, receiving within yourself. So that really like crosses there's a lot of words to describe what a transformational adornment is for. Um, And the underlying tone is celebration of self. Mm -hmm. And uh, about six months ago, I received my Reiki 2 certification. So that really, again, when I went into that environment, I was like, oh my gosh, this is part of my lineage. You know, Mm -hmm. like it felt so natural to me and being and moving metal in the way that I do with just, you know, on a surface level is moving you know, bending something that's hard and making it pliable and moving it into these forms. Um, But Reiki, really the easiest way for me to explain why I felt that Reiki was important for me was to infuse the piece with all that much, with way more intention and um, goodness that I, can possibly put into a piece. And then I meet with the client. Well, I meet with you. Like, I think we met two or three times Mm -hmm. and do a Reiki session. And that again, really allows me to tap in to receive, you know, whatever messages that might come up about this piece or um, obviously messages for you as the individual, which you can or cannot share with me. But when we're talking about this energetic plane, right? Mm. This energetic field, it really just allows like the transformational adornment to move you into Mm. this, you know, I really, and I'm getting like bold here, but like the idea of being an alchemist and being able to really turn dense energies over and uh, elevate, elevate energies that are then represented in this piece. And I really do believe that's possible, Mm. um, not only with what I do, but possible period, you know, out in the world that we live in is, 
when things are moved in the three-dimensional world, something else is happening too. Something else is being shifted on this internal level. Mm. And I'll let you speak to that, but I really do feel like doing the Reiki sessions and the questionnaire and then making a piece and the the messages that I get about the person that, you know, are guided by your responses from this questionnaire. And then we talk throughout the experience too, right? Like we talked on a regular basis for that couple months. And there's a lot of information that, you know, someone can intuit from, from those experiences. Right. So uh, that part of that questionnaire, I also get an idea of what stones you love, what you're attracted to, what you're not attracted to, and that helps guide me to what, what to use or what not to use. Now, I have to say there have been some times when I'll get a, an intuitive hit and be like, that stone that you don't want is really the stone that you need. <laughs> and of course, I present that to the person and we go from there, um, but I create this piece then that's really about what you wrote on that questionnaire right. and then some because we've right. moved you know it's it's um I guess it's a type of therapy but I don't you know I don't consider myself a therapist I feel I'm a you know holistic metal smith a transformational guide um and we're moving through a process together and then you have this piece that after that period of time is when you wear that, my intention is that you wear that to adorn your spirit, you know, mm. to adorn your authenticity and how incredible you are right now in the moment. Yeah. Yes. And it's, and it is a process, the whole, the whole thing. And, and, and beautifully. So it's not like, it's not a process of she's going to be messaging me every five minutes and then sure. <laughs> make up. not that kind of process. <laughs> when I say process, I mean it in the most beautiful way. Um, and, and, and that's what you want. If you look, if you're going to get something that is not just, you're not running to Walmart and getting a $5 pair of earrings off the shelf that has been made a million times and everybody has it. And there's no intention other than you need the, out, the, the earrings to go with the outfit. There's no, nothing sure. else other than that. Right. So this is, this is a, and, and I think this is why I was so drawn to it. This is a piece that is when I pick it up and put it on, it means something it's a process. And, and if you want that piece to work for you, to be that part of who you are and what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, then you want to have that connection with someone and you want it to be that process. And the one thing that I love is it really was a transformational process because the piece came a long way from what we <laughs> first envisioned, right? <laughs> it did. Yeah. And often that happens. And that's what I find that happens during the Reiki sessions is mm -hmm. that I'll get so most of the time when I do the Reiki sessions, when we're in that, I'm at my bench, because that's, you know, I open my eyes, and suddenly it seems like there's the stone or there's, you know, that's where my magic happens is at that bench, you know, my mm -hmm. studio bench. Um, and yeah, there's, I mean, from the where we start it you are different mm -hmm. i mean i think when you're on this path of personal growth and transformation every minute hopefully you're evolving now that doesn't mean that you don't have hard days or challenging times but when you're committed to forever leaning in with curiosity about what an opportunity is mm -hmm. what what challenge what opportunity as a challenge presents itself you're constantly uh, shifting and changing. And so the piece, I mean, this, the piece for a transformational dormant could be anything, mm -hmm. anything, right? Like there's infinite possibilities of what a piece could be for someone. Right. And so to really narrow it down, it's really important to have that connection. And I really value those connections. Like that one-on-one -on -one connection is, is so beautiful. Um, it's the trust of, of you and it's the belief in myself and there's this beautiful co-creation process that happens and then there's something at the end of it that you're right it's when you say yes to something being made for you for a bespoke piece of anything you are elevating 
your self-worth and you're basically making a statement that you are worth it period well i have really really enjoyed having you here today to hear a little bit more about your story um, and also to get to talk about my experience with working with you as well Um, like i said i don't always get the opportunity to do that and it's and it's been a wonderful experience and um you know like i said don't think don't don't think that you're gonna work with ali and get a sure you know (laughs) Listen, some, some, (laughs) that was my subconscious doing. I had nothing to do with this piece consciously. I just want to tell you guys that. (laughs) Well, let me say though, like, just to clarify that you saw the stone throughout. It wasn't like you got it in the mail and you're like, oh my gosh, this is the biggest, the biggest stone I've ever seen. Like I, you know, we did zoom calls. We did, I, I just want to make that clear that it's not like you're in this for whatever you get. (laughs) Yes. Don't think that you're going to, you know, she's just going to stick you with something that you, you absolutely do not like at all. That's not how it works. I'm just being silly because, um, because I had to be open to this because this is not like something I would typically wear, but you know, what's really funny is that my, my word for this year was influence and, and my, I, I, I'm not, despite what this says, I am not a person that likes a whole lot of attention. I don't, <laughs> despite what that says. Um, but I, but I thought about this. I th- I think about, I, I have yet to go to the store in this. I'm going to wear it next time I go to the store and to think about when someone w- in my t-shirt and jeans and sees that and goes, wow. Mm-hmm. But that's for me, like, not maybe outright, but that's the kind of impact that I want to have on people of people mm-hmm. to go. That's the help I needed. That's the joy I needed today. That's, you know, that's how I want to help people is with, with that kind of energy that comes behind that wow reaction, you know? Yeah. And so I'm going to wear it to the grocery store. I'm fully excited about continuing yeah. to wear it with my silly t-shirts and I love it. Well, and it makes me think too that, you know, not every piece needs to have a stone or a crystal in it or a gemstone. Um, And you're receiving the benefits as you're wearing it, but the people around you are receiving those benefits too. And so that Mm -hmm. woman who sees you or that man who sees you in the grocery store, they're getting that hit, like you're saying, from the piece and also specifically from the stone and what it generates you know the Mm. healing properties so you're really like this lighthouse of (laughs) i know (laughs) of amplifying the best possible energy (laughs) i love it i love it which is a huge responsibility yeah yes there i mean there's that side of it i mean that's what i think came along with that initial feeling that i had when you showed me the picture was oh i don't know if i can do this (laughs) Yes, you can. <laughs> I can, and I am, and here we are, yes. all sparkly for you today. Um, so, yes. from this episode forward, um, actually, you probably saw it on a couple episodes before this, actually. But from moving on, you'll see it in every episode. It's it's the breakthrough show piece officially. Right. If there there's a official breakthrough jewelry now, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, thank you so much for being here thank and for you. sharing your story with us. If you want to tell everybody really quickly where they can find you and work with you and all that good stuff. Sure. So uh, my website is the easiest place to go, which is alleycouseadornment.com. And maybe there's a link that you provide in the show notes or something. Um, but that's the easiest way to get a hold of me is alleycouseadornment.com. And you'll get other you know, you'll get lots of ideas of all the work that I do. Yes, there's lots of good ideas there and um, get a peek at some different things that she's done. And um, I just thank you so much for shining your light, being in touch with your authentic self and allowing us the space to, to grow in our lives as well through your work. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, much love to you. Thank you. All right, guys, make sure you check out the show notes for all of Allie's information. And we're going to be back in just a minute for more of the Breakthrough Show. 
It's time to save the date. The Breakthrough Show Network proudly presents a musical evening of giving. It's a virtual benefit concert event benefiting the Weiss Scholarship Foundation and Overcoming Odds. This event features Olivia Ambani, Abby Miracle, Kevin Kiley, Lisa Pinnock, the Ted Yoder Band, Rory Kelly, and so many more. This event is sponsored by Delight Cafe, CBD, Viviva Foods, and the Breakthrough Show Network. Get your early bird tickets now at a musical evening of giving.com and save the date for December 4th, 2021. Welcome back to the Breakthrough Show. I want to give a big thanks to our special guest today, Ali Kaus. And I'm back now with Kevin Chambers, who we got to hear one of his beautiful songs in segment one of the show today. And um, I'm so thankful that you're here today because at the Thank time so we're much. recording this, um, I have been, you know, going through my own healing journey as whatnot as well. And music just really, truly is, it's better than most drugs I know of, to be honest. I would agree with that for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it's bizarre that you can really hear, a, feel a song when you hear it. It's amazing. Yes, 100%. Well, you're going to do another song for us yes. um, called Underground. What is this one about? So this one, I also, I was living up in New York and um, this one's about going down into the subways and seeing someone across the platform and then just going on this adventure in your mind with them, even though you never actually speak to them. So uh, it's, it's basically called Underground and uh, yeah, that's it. I thought I was the only one that does that. I feel better right. now. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. All right, you guys, well, here to perform Underground, we have Kevin Chambers. I saw you standing there with your headphones on and a torn hole in your jeans Surrounded by a hundred eyes, did you see me in this crowded elevator? Won't you take us down? Let's go on the ground See the world beneath our feet. Let's go underground. We'll have it all to ourselves. The deeper we go, the more gravity pulls us. And let's go, go down. Let's go underground. Underground. Place the stars as it does and lights. And several miles later, we won't know where we are. The time stop, the clock keeps ticking, so let's not waste a second. Let's go on the ground. See the go on ground. We'll let it all to ourselves. The deeper we go, the more gravity pulls us. So let's go, go down. Let's go
on the ground. Let's go. love it <laughs> thank you beautiful and, and it's so it's it's such a um it's it's it got that emotional feel to it while still being a very yes. fun kind of like we're just going on this little trip in my head <laughs> oh that's awesome that's so, we're that's doing. so great to hear. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of though i was a huge fan growing up of lisa loeb and if oh, lisa nice. loeb played piano like it's okay. that same vibe Wait, i i remember she played guitar she plays piano as well no, she doesn't. But if oh, she, she like, okay. if it wasn't the guitar and it was the piano, right. it's the same. It's it's a very similar vibe. I love it. Oh, um, cool. Nice. That's just awesome. a very, you know, you have a way about you, and that's what I always love when we listen to you on TikTok. Is you play, you know, you'll do covers of songs, but it's it's Kevin's in that oh, moment. That's so nice to hear. You know, it's it's that's so and cool. it, that's not an easy thing for people to do. Even I've I've been singing my whole life as well and I never I never, you know, did anything with it professionally, but when right. when I go to do a song, I really struggle sometimes to make it my own to you know yeah. to because you're trying to you, you want to I think in the back of my mind sometimes I've talked about this with the other other artists that have come on you mm -hmm. if you want if the original artist heard it you'd almost want them to be proud <laughs> oh that's yeah no I totally feel that for sure yeah right yeah but um sure. so I know that you've got you've got the albums out and you've got singles that are out what are you working on right now Kevin so I have a, a new track that I'm finishing up um, and I, you know, Iceland's kind of throwing that for a small, you know, throwing a wrench into that whole release, but I've got a track that I'm almost done with and I'm going to release it very soon. And, uh, but, but you can find me on all your streaming services. You can find me on Spotify, Apple music, um, and it's, you know, I'm under Kevin Chambers. So uh, that's where you can find me. You can find me on iTunes as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just, you know, finishing up that track and uh, continuing to do TikTok as well. I love yes, doing this Yes, you have to go see the, the concerts on TikTok. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's funny that I, I didn't even like think when I started to do it that they would become these, you know, like Kevin's Cafe has become this, <laughs> something that, that all of you love to, to be a part of and I love to have you as well it's really really cool it's really cool TikTok has been really interesting because you know you have a lot of people on there that are just they'll come on and they'll fool around they're not really right. you know they've got a guitar in their basement they're just you know hanging for a mm -hmm. few yeah. and then every now and then a Kevin will pop up and you're like <laughs> where did he come from and why oh. is he not like a thing yet <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jessica. I, I listen, yeah. we appreciate it too because we're, you know, we're we're parents and we're tired at mm. the end of the day and we're just trying oh, to relax and we have nice music now to go to sleep to. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I know you have a ton of I've seen them in the comments, people that are hardcore Kevin Kevin Chambers fans yes. <laughs> um at this point. You oh, know. Yeah, they're they're fantastic and I just I love to I love interacting with all of you through the chats and um, I'm actually working towards starting up a Twitch channel soon. So oh, I'll, nice. I'll see if I can, you know, make that shift and, uh, and, but yeah, I'm, I'm up on TikTok and all, all my, all my social media is Kevin Chambers music. Just all one it's word. It's easy. We've made it's it easy, easy yes. for you guys. You understand? <laughs> You're right, right. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's just been fantastic. And I, I, I love, I mean, I just discovered TikTok. I want to say like just over a year ago, I started, to, mm. well, I guess it was when the pandemic started. Yeah. Um, I was like, I was at home, you know, it was a week after we were all on lockdown in March. Of like, what do we do? 
I was like, yeah, well, man, it's got to do something. So I just started putting up piano videos and singing. And but now the lives have just become so much fun yeah. to do. So, yeah, yeah. that's great. it's amazing. And it's and it's so fun for me too to kind of watch because um, TikTok's an interesting it's different, I feel like, than other social media. So we kind of, it it's, it's almost like it there's is. an adjustment period. To try right. You really have to, to when, once it starts up, you're like, wait, what am I, how am I doing? Everything's yeah. going so fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been, it's been beautiful to see like your audience continue to grow on there and oh, people <laughs> to be excited, um, you know, about the music. And, and I'm so thankful that you, you chose to do the show this season, because I think oh, that your music is, is unique and it's touching. And it's something that, um, like I said, it's, it's healing. It's oh, healing thank you. I, when that, we hear that's it. So, so great to hear. I love that. I love Absolutely. That. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Kevin, and sharing a little of bit of your story with our audience. And we hope you'll, you'll come back and perform for us again sometime. Absolutely. Please. Whenever you need me. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, you guys, it's been a fantastic show today. I want to thank my very special guests, Kevin Chambers, and of course, Ali Kaus, and thank all of you for watching or listening wherever you are in the world today. And I want to remind you until next week, Week to make every day a great day for a breakthrough. We'll see you next time. Breakthroughs are about more than you might think. They're about discovering who you are, digging deep, reaching to the core of your soul. They're about healing, healing yourself, understanding your beliefs, creating a ripple effect. And it's not just those initial moments that matter. It's about using them to bring more joy into our own lives and the lives of others. It's about having fun, letting loose, enjoying every moment life has to offer. It's about finding a safe space. It's about creating connection. Join us each and every month for exclusive programming where we invite you to go beyond the breakthrough. So we ask you, are you ready? We'll see you online at thebreakthroughshow.com. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Breakthrough. Please visit our website at www.thebreakthroughshow.com. Be sure to join our After the Breakthrough community powered by Patreon. We look forward to seeing you next week.